In HTML5, when you insert an image, you should be using the element that is called picture. You can see that this is a block level element and that it opens and closes. For good coding practice, it's lined up. You can also see that this is contained within the header. So this picture is contained within the header. This element with the attribute image and source should look very familiar. This is something that we've been using in HTML for a long time, even in 4. So we still need to put in the image, but we use a different tag as well. We are going to use source and media. And notice that you have a minimum width. This is so when the image displays on different devices, whether that's a phone or a laptop, when there's a certain amount of pixels on the device, it will display the image of the appropriate size. You should also set your image width to be responsive, which means that it will adjust based on the screen, but you should probably have multiple images in order to make this work as well. Because if you just use one large image and you're using it on your mobile device, then it still has to load all of the pixels that the large image for the computer screen need on your tiny device and it will really bog down your website. I have the image that I'm going to use open in Photoshop. This image, the first thing that I do is I make sure that the image size is what I need. This is a really large image. So this is 883 pixels by 1237 pixels. Pixels is the unit of measurement that we use in web. This would take up most of the screen on a website. So it's really good, especially on a raster image that's made up of pixels, to start with a large file. But this file is way too big for what we want to use it for. This is going to be used as an icon on the screen. Because of that, for my large image, when I use this on my website, I'm going to set this to 300 pixels. Notice that um, these are constrained and so it keeps the aspect ratio but it makes it smaller when it's smaller um, you can see the size as far as space and we are much smaller you can see on my screen that it displays much smaller this will actually be our large image size so I'm going to go file save as and I'm going to go I'm in my site root directory for this website and here it says copy because it knows that the original file was larger I always mark mine with large and it's not a bad idea to put 300 PX so that you know it's 300 pixels. When you save your PNG, it asks if you want it to be interlaced. You want to say yes in web development because when it's interlaced, the image, the full image will load on the page, but it will fade in because it will load like every 10th pixel and it will just have a fade in effect on your screen. So whenever you save a PNG, which is one of the web images that works, you always save it as interlaced. Now notice that with this same file, I'm going to go File, oh, sorry, Image, Image Size, and instead of 300, the next one I'm going to do will be 200. I'm going to say OK, and you can see that it changed. And I'll do File, Save As. And for this one, I'm going to do 200px. I save it, 
my settings are already ready and I just click OK. I make my next image. Image size and I'm going to drop this down to 100. And I repeat the saving process. On websites in galleries, I have seen up to eight different image sizes of the same image so that it calls the source that you want it to. Now that I have my images in my site root directory, I'm going to go back up and my index.html file is right here. So now it is time for me to go back to the source and I'm going to set this with the correct path and it's going to reflect what code I'm doing. What you want to do right here, since I already have the code ready, you'll have to code this on yours, is I am going to go from my index page into my image folder. And in my code, that means that I put images forward slash. Then I am going to put the main image that I want to use. This was the original image that was almost the size of a computer screen and that's really too big for, for my website. So the, webs, the one I'm going to use is right here. And one of my things that I do because <clears throat> I'm efficient is if you go in to rename and you copy it, then you go back to your code and you paste it in, you never get the file name wrong. On your computer, you won't be able to see the file extension because the district doesn't allow that. I know this is a PNG and I have to put the file extension. The alt tag is alternate text and a screen reader for someone who is blind or visually impaired this is the only thing they'll know about the image and I'll put that this is the CSS3 logo and the screen reader will be able to read that. I, I'm okay with the width to auto on this particular image because this image is just going to be a part of the page. It's not going to be like a header that should be set to 100% of a page. So the next thing that I need to do is decide when things display. And you'll need to code this source media into your code and your minimum width. And the first minimum width you can see at the top here um, is if the screen has a minimum width, width of 650 pixels, which image do you want it to display? And for the larger screen, because this is the minimum, I'm going to put in the largest image. For 465, which is probably more like a, a tablet, then over here, my little silly rename and copy, so I just did control C for copy, I will put this in here. I hope that you noticed that on the first one I forgot to put in my oh, PNG. Oh, boy, I'm having a hard time. There we go. I do have to add the file that I want it to call. Now I want to go one step further than the example that I have. And I'm going to put in this next line of code. 
I just did a copy. I'm now doing a paste. And now, for this one, if the minimum width is 300, then for this, I want to use a smaller image. This is my favorite trick. I don't use it if the image name is really easy, <laughs> but these ones are very descriptive and it really will help me later to know what to do. Just a review of the code. Inside the header, we have the picture element. Oh, pretend you didn't see that. We have the picture element that opens and closes. Now, I have not only put in the image source, which is my largest image, but I have also given it instructions based on the minimum width of the device. A reminder that the viewport meta tag allows your website to detect what device you're being that is being used. Without that detection, this source with the media and the sizes and the different images will not work. It, your code can be on the page, but it won't change based on your device. You should have this portion, you should have your meta viewport, which you should have in every single file. But the code that I need to see right now is all highlighted. It's a header with a picture with three different image sources for different sizes. You may use any image you would like to create this. I would like you to save your file and this time I would like a text file instead of an HTML file because I would like to read your code and that will be the easiest way for me to grade your code. Please turn this into Canvas.